your hands to him and just declare hallelujah. Just the voice is hallelujah, hallelujah, for the Lord God only Would you lift your hands to heaven and declare it to him? to open your mouth and bless the name of our Father. Bless the God that we serve in whose authority we are gathered in this place. Open your mouth and bless Him. Open your mouth and acknowledge Him. Don't just stand there. Open your mouth and magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, pray. Imela, Imela, oh kaka, oh Come on, everybody, lift your voice and declare. Amen. 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 to him tonight. If he's been good to you, open your mouth and just thank him. This is not a show. This is the art of gratitude. This is not a show. This is a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to the God of all flesh that has been good to you. Come on, raise your voice and magnify him. Raise your voice in 60 seconds. Raise your voice and give him thanks. Come on, exalt him. Sweet. 
You can bless him in the spirit if you want to. You seated in two minutes the Bible declares that the entrance of the word of God give it light I want you in the next two minutes to ask him for that light that light is understanding that light is wisdom that light is what would dispel darkness from your life in any ramification whatsoever two minutes I want you to lift your voice and say father let your word come forth with light and understanding to my life. Let it come with hope. Let it come to inspire me. Let it come to open me up to wisdom. Your word that makes me wise even in these days. Even in this time. Would you talk to him for just a minute? Would you talk to him for just a minute? Arabako sama brende me brondo se ma brende. Le moro ho samaire. Ke brabo shambra tamba brado ko pradimos. 
Mele broko subra hadima subra Vele bo subrada A word in due season to my life A word that brings hope A word that will inspire me A word that will bring life into my own heart Come on, just pray for 30 more seconds. Maraha Marakoshi Maharia Dole Messiaha. In Jesus' name we pray. One more prayer for yourself before you sit down. Maybe at the course of the message you'll realize why you are praying this prayer. Luke chapter 22 from verse 31 to 32. Jesus was having the last supper with his disciples. And there was something profound that he, he made known to Peter. And I want you to pray it tonight and ask God for grace. Because we need that grace even in these last days. So that your faith can be steadfast, so that your hope can be anchored in Christ and Christ alone. He said, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. He said, But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. You are going to pray and say, Lord, in these last days, may my faith not fail. May there be no situation that is capable of removing me from my being steadfast in your word, from my holding on to your will, from my staying on course and running this race. You know, at some point, the Bible says that we should run with patience the race that is set ahead of us. I assure you that there will be troubled times ahead. I want you to make an investment today and say, Lord, I receive grace that my faith will not fail and that I will stay on course. Do you understand the prayer? Now raise your voice in one minute and pray. Lord, in these last days, I receive staying power. I receive the grace to be steadfast. Somebody is praying. Somebody is praying that my faith will not fail. That no situation will take me out of the way. That no situation will stop me from believing in you. That I will remain steadfast. That I will remain steadfast. That I will remain steadfast, holding on to you. Regardless of the things that surround me, regardless of the challenges, the circumstances around me, as I journey through life, I receive grace today, O Lord, to stay on course. To never be shaken, to never be moved. He said, For those who trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. The grace to remain steadfast and unmovable. Are you praying? Somebody invest in your future through prayer. Invest, make that investment now. Regardless of circumstances, my faith will not fail. My faith will not fail That I will not fall on the way I will keep holding on to Jesus He says 
is looking out to Jesus, the author and the finisher of name we have prayed father let your word come forth with light with understanding insight that is capable of inspiring the hearts of your children let there be a word in due season to that one that is weary in heart and at the cause of this service lord by the power of your spirit may we receive grace in Jesus mighty name that everyone that is sick here will be healed tonight that everyone that is oppressed will be set free that anyone going through any cycle in life any season in life that is orchestrated by the enemy today there will be a change in their story let your name be forever exalted in Jesus great name we have prayed please shout a big amen God bless you. Just be seated in the presence of the Lord. I have a maker. He found my heart. Before even time began my life is in his hands he knows my name I'm prophesying to somebody he knows my And he hears, and he hears me when I call. Let's sing, I have a father. I have a father. He calls me his own. He calls me his own. Never leave me. Prophesy to yourself. He never leave me. No matter where I go. No, no matter where I go. Let's sing it again. Let's prophesy to somebody who is weary and hard. I have a fire. He calls me his own. He calls me his own. He'll never leave me. Sing it to yourself tonight. He'll never leave me. No matter where I go. No matter where I go. You have to prophesy the songs to yourself. He knows my name. I am returned. This is each day that falls. Each day that falls. And he hears and he hears me when I go. Let's do it one more time. Every thought say he knows my every thought he sees each day that falls and he hears and he hears me when I go and he hears me when 
Lord is near unto them that call upon him with a broken heart and say them such that are a contrite spirit. The Bible says that the ears of the Lord is open to the cry of the righteous. He hears me when I call. When I call and hears me when I call when I am down and know my soul the weary when trouble comes can you project the song? I want them to see what we are singing. I am still waiting in the silence until you come and see your eyes. When I am down, when I am down, and all my soul is so weary, when my soul is weary. When troubles come and my heart is my heart heavy with burning, now I am still, and now I am still waiting in the silence, in the silence until you come. you are going through now. He raises you up. You raise me up. The Lord is the lift of man. He's called Ebenezer. He's the helper of the helpless. You raise me up to more than I can be. You raise me one more time. You raise be seated. Romans chapter 8. I believe that the word of the Lord that will come to us today will come to bring encouragement, to bring comfort. I believe that God sent me to speak to at least one person here. And I want our hearts to be open to receive what the Lord has for us today. Even when you are down, He lifts you up. He raises you up. In the midst of the battles, the storms, and the challenges of life, His mighty hand is strong enough, not just to lift you, but to keep you lifted. To keep you lifted. 
Romans chapter 8 verse 37 Romans chapter 8 verse 37 If you are a believer Can you just read what is on the screen At the count of three One, two, three In all these things We are more conquerors Through him In how many things All these things We are more than conquerors in order for you to know the things that the writer of this passage was referring to it will be good that we read from verse 35 and then we'll go down to 37 again he said who shall separate us from the love of christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution are you looking at the things listed there let me read it again so that I can communicate with somebody's mind. He said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Then the list goes on. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. Go on. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Then verse 37 says, Yet in all these things, so you know the things he's talking about now, the things that were afore listed, in all these things we are more than. He didn't say we are conquerors. He said we are more than what? Through him who loved us. Can you permit me to read down to verse 39? I love this scripture so much. For I am persuaded. I don't know about you, but for I am persuaded. Well, you know, there are things, there are confessions that you can't make corporately. When it has to do with faith, when it has to do with your conviction about God, the convictions that sustains you through this life, with all the challenges here and there, there are confessions you can't make corporately. It has to be based on the personal faith of that individual. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, not even things to come, go on, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing, including the devil. Is that true? The devil is created now shall be able to separate us from what the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord somebody say amen to that i'm teaching briefly on what i title more than conquerors more than conquerors there is no one who will go through any of the situations that is listed in this scripture there is no one who will have an experience of any of these that will not be brought to a place of despair discouragement or depression he says shall tribulation distress nakedness famine and one at one point or the other i believe that every one of us has experienced at least one of the things that are listed here but the bible says in all these things we remain more we remain more than conquerors i don't know why god decides that he will give us victory in the midst of those things because most times we will always think that god should quickly or swiftly rush rush to you when you are in the middle of a circumstance or a situation and immediately bring deliverance to you just like an emergency but the truth is there are about three kinds of deliverance that a person can experience that a believer can experience in this life the first kind of deliverance is when god pulls you out of the situation that's the emergency you talk about you know when crisis come around you problems set in and instantly god salvages you and brings you out of that situation in a way 
that you are not a victim to reproach in a way that you are not a victim to discouragement but then another kind of deliverance is where and every one of us one way or another we have experienced this but there's another kind of deliverance that happens when god takes you through the circumstance he allows the problems to come around he allows the challenges to come things that you thought will swallow you and then all of a sudden you come out of that season and you discover that you are still alive you discover that you are out with hope your hope is still steadfast then there is a third kind of deliverance where god decides to fight for you he doesn't pull you out he doesn't allow you to go through you remember it says when you go through the fire it will not consume you when you go through the waters it will not overshadow you that was the kind of deliverance that the hebrew boys experienced shadrach meshach and abednego but then a third kind of deliverance which happens sometimes is when god comes and fights for you and the bible says that the lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace but today we are going to examine something that is quite different how that your confession of being more than a conqueror in other words being one who is already victorious regardless of the situations around you is verified by the word of god he says in all these things we are more than conquerors psalm 66 another scripture verse 8 to 12 psalm 66 verse 8 to 12 I'm reading from verse 8 so we can get the context of uh, the passage i would like it to be in king james translation i think it gives a better rendition he said oh bless our god ye people and make the voice of his praise to be heard which holdeth our soul in life and suffereth not our feet to be moved he said for thou O god has proved us thou hast tried us as silver is tried he said thou broughtest us into the net thou laid affliction upon our loins he said thou hast caused men to ride over our heads we went even through fire and through water he said but thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place somebody say a wealthy place somebody is getting to that place in the name of jesus how do i know i know because of the trials that you have faced recently all right the bible says to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven there is a season when you laugh and dance and you are overjoyed at the things god has done and then there are seasons where it looks like god is far away and you are alone but the truth about this is that these seasons don't last forever one season will always prepare you for the next so if you sorrow today i want you to cheer up and be encouraged because jesus told his disciples in john chapter 16 he said for now you may sorrow he said but don't worry he said for your sorrow shall be turned into joy he said we went through fire and through water is there anything more than that in fact i like what he said in verse 10 he said thou hast tried us right that's how he puts it thou hast tried us go back to verse 10 let me see let me take out something from that verse he said for thou O god has proved us thou hast tried us as silver is tried every time silver is a metal and every time if you go to a blacksmith shop when metals are being when we know a metallic weapon is being forged the metal in its raw state will have to go through a process and the height of the process that metals must go through is when it is tested by fire the fire is meant to consume but rather what the fire will do is purify that metal by consuming the impurities that are embedded in it so you may not know that there are yet impurities in that silver or that gold until it goes through fire that means that you will not know how authentic your christian faith is 
you will not know how rooted you are in God until there is a furnace of trials, there is a furnace of affliction. Every man is proven by the challenges he's able to go through and come through. Every man. Verse 11, please. I like that verse 11 so much. He said, Thou broughtest us into the net. In other words, you saw the trap the enemy set for us. I prayed before I left my house this morning, only for me to enter in a pep and have accident. Is it, did I prayed. Isn't it? What happened? Why did God not deliver me? How many of you have been there before? Or am I just talking to myself today? Yesterday we went to visit the friend of one of our brothers in the hospital. Uh, you know, his family, his wife and his daughter. Little daughter, I think just about a few years old. While they were traveling on their way back to Medugri, I believe, they had an accident. And my goodness, you needed to see the state that they were in. The legs of the woman broken about two or yeah, two places. Fire burnt one other side of the leg. Even the baby was not spared. Fire burns everywhere. They had to do, I was told they had done two surgeries on her. She was just, you will just see her bounded up in white. Plaster everywhere. I say, ah, even this one. But when you hear the other part of the news that the people by their side in that accident were burnt to death, then you realize what the psalmist is saying here. He said, you brought us into the net. You saw the trap the enemy will set to, and you allowed it. That's why sometimes as preachers, it is difficult sometimes when people come to you with so many problems, with so many questions. You know, people go through challenges in this life that they don't understand sometimes. And they really need someone to bring an answer or at least to clarify what they are going through. And well, it now happened that God that we serve is a spirit that you can't see him with your physical eyes. So what they will do is they will look for those who claim to represent him. And so many at times as preachers or as pastors, we seem to be asked questions that even we don't have answer for. And so you always have to learn how to say it is well. Sometimes even when you say that it is well, you don't even understand. You do, you, you, in your heart, you are asking God the same questions. Sometimes even the pastor himself may be going through stuff. And worst of all, God will say, this thing you are going through, go and preach it. So where is the faith now? Because we've always believed that faith is to produce results around your life. And God is saying, in as much as you lack this result, go and preach it. So you can see another side of faith. The Bible says, you brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our loins. I think there's a place in Psalms 119 verses, I can't get 60 something or 70 something. It says, it was good for me that I was afflicted. Either 60 something or 70 something. It says, it was good for me that I was afflicted. That I may learn your laws. It's only someone who has gone through a lot. And his faith is still standing that can make that. Yes, that's it. Thank you. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. It's not every Christian that can say this. Oh. There are people who have caused God to his face. All of a sudden you hear a call. A call, a call comes into your phone. And you hear that all your family members have been involved in an accident. All is dead except one. And the one that is alive is near death. Then where is the God that you are serving? Or you are a student, you are starting your exam tomorrow, you have not paid your school fees. Even the 65% that they say pay. And you are just in 100 level. So if, if, if this challenge is coming now, how am I sure that I will finish this program? And instead of reading your books a week to exam, you are, you are just in pain and worries. When people tell you that the Lord is good, you say, no, 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 no. Let's, we can hear that another time. But in this situation, no. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. That I might learn your status. So every man at some point in life, 
there will be a season where you 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 will have to encounter and go through challenges troubles in fact it's not everyone that you'll be aware of before you enter trials that only god knows the bible says is the only comfort we have in scripture is that the bible says that god will not allow you to be tempted beyond what ah, but sometimes the temptation can be more than you is that not so am i talking to myself or am i talking to am i saying the truth uh-huh. say my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory and now you have been praying using that scripture praying to god trusting him for provision and the deadline is tomorrow by 6 a.m and up till now no message has even dropped on your phone not to let alone an alert the only alert that drop is debit alert the little 50 naira you have they are debiting from it but i thought the bible said my god shall supply all but he says yeah in all these things we are more than conquerors second corinthians chapter 2 last scripture and then we'll go into the message in full 2 verse 14 second corinthians 2 verse 14 he said now thanks be unto god which always causeth us to triumph in christ which always causeth us to triumph and someone once says that there is there is no triumph without a trial that means that there is a situation that you will be in and then you will experience the power of the most high god that helps you triumph in the midst of that situation he said now thanks be unto god which always causes or somehow god has a way of coming through for you and that is if you will hold on so to be more than conquerors is not just when things are good and working well for you and when there are testimonies springing from your life because of the things that the lord has done that is also good but to be more than conquerors is also even when things are not in your favor even when you go through hard times like i said every one of us will have our share of that in this life in fact as a believer you must get ready for challenges you must get gone are the days where this this gospel of every day is good every every day is going to be better every day is going to be this and that god will send manna from heaven god will throw meat into through your window or you will see money under your sometimes you have experienced miracle money is true but it doesn't happen all the time there are times where you will hold your saving box you know that saving box i used to you pray in tongues all night and when in the morning when you open it there's nothing there so to be more than conquerors is also proven even in the midst of these kinds of situations when we seem to be burdened by all kinds of needs all kinds of circumstances in life challenges that that make your humanity set in challenges that will take you to what the englishman calls at your wit's end in other words you are you are done for i think there is a time in paul uh, you know in second first, second corinthians chapter one paul made a, a statement in verse eight he said we were burdened beyond measure we were pressed even to death all the time paul go where, 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 you know preaching the gospel there were moments where you would think god will come and deliver him from the hands of the gentiles or from the hands of the romans a time came where he was stoned and the disciples gathered around him outside the city the bible says he rose up what it means was he died actually many times paul had had situations that had brought him to near death or even death experiences what made him survive was his persuasion his conviction his faith and that is what he had to write to the roman church he said that in all these things we are more than conquerors the ability to look beyond and above the things the circumstances around you and to still proclaim your victory in christ to know that nothing changes regardless of the situation saying all these things we are more and conquerors what does it mean to be more than conquerors or what does it mean to be more than a conqueror number one for better understanding now 
To be more than a conqueror means to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. To be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. To be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Psalms 107 verse 2. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Revelations 5 verse 9 to 10. It says, for you have brought us out of every tribe. You have redeemed us out of every tribe and kindred and tongue. By your blood and you have made us unto our God kings and priests. Let me explain what redemption is all about. Because when we talk about being more than a conqueror, we are talking about a, a, an elevation, a place, a position where a believer is placed. That regardless of the situations that will change around his life, he remains constant. He remains steadfast. He remains victorious. And have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. Redemption simply means that when Jesus died on the cross, he shed his blood for us. I hope you know the Bible says he took up sin upon himself. We were the ones that were to die for our sins. We were to pay the penalty for sin, which was death. And I hope you know that <laughs> according to Adam, even a newborn baby has sinned. The sin we are talking about there is not just what you do. It's the nature that is in you. David said in Psalms 51, In sin did my mother conceive me. So by reason of being of Adam being our ancestor, every one of us was born into sin and iniquity. So you were licensed to pay that price of death even before doing anything. Maybe that's why children cry when they are born. I don't know. <laughs> that's why. You've not done anything and you're already condemned. But the Bible says in the fullness of time, God sent his son to die on the cross. He took sin upon himself. He took the sin of the whole world. And he died on that cross. And as his blood was shed, that blood became the price for our redemption. Redemption simply means to buy back. When you are redeeming something, you know, they say like in church, when you make a vow, when you finally fulfill that vow, they will say you have redeemed your vow. Redemption simply means to restore the salvage value of a thing. Agricultural economists will understand what I'm talking about. That this is the price of this. Give me that bottle for instance. Let's say this is the price. This, this will cost a hundred naira. And then it expires. I hope you know nobody will want to buy it again. It is of no use. Even though there is water here that can quench the test of an individual. But it's already expired. All that is left now is to, for it to be thrown away. So the person who bought it, the shop owner who bought it, has made a loss already. But imagine when somebody comes and says, Okay, I'm not interested in using it. But I want to buy it so that you don't make a loss. And then he pays for it and walks away. That is redemption. So to be more than conquerors means to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That your value as a human being, that your position as God had determined even before sin came into the world, which was dominion as man, as far as man is concerned, that it was restored back. That you have been delivered from the power of darkness. That you have been salvaged from the hand of the enemy. And you have been brought into the, into the kingdom of his dear son. To be more than a conqueror means to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The blood that washes you of sin. The blood that takes care of forgiveness. The blood that redeems your image. The blood that blots away who you were in the past. That the moment you are saved, everything about your past is deleted. It's only men that will remember who you were. It's just like a mess this... Which word would I use now? It's just like, uh, which other car? Let me not use Mercedes, because some of you, that's your dream car. Amen. Which car will I use? Let me use a Japanese product. Which one? Toyota. Uh -huh. Imagine you putting a Tesla, you know Tesla cars? 
Imagine you putting the engine of a Tesla car in a Toyota. What you will see is still Toyota. That's why men will look at you after salvation. And they still want to treat you based on the knowledge that they had of you before. They knew you were a thief. They knew you were a crook. Nobody this one. She they walk up and down everybody's house. Not knowing that the engine is no longer Toyota. The engine is now Tesla. That's what redemption is. That God bought you back through the precious blood of his son. And he put his life inside of you. That means anybody that says anything against you. It's not you the person is talking to because your former life is dead. He said, for you were dead and your life now is hid with Christ. That is what makes you more than a conqueror. That you have been redeemed by the blood. Do you know, as simple as this is, it's a powerful knowledge that can break you or cause you to break free from all kinds of satanic oppression. To be redeemed. So you need to know who you are in Christ Jesus. That you have been recreated according to the image of God which is Christ. In other words, in heaven, they see you as they see Christ. That's why the Bible says we are members of his body. We are, fle we are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. It says, for as he is, so are we. Who is he now? He is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God that has been made Lord and Christ above all. And so you are walking with that shared dominion. Do you know that knowing this can be a therapy in the time of depression? Because you know sometimes when people suffer from lack, one of the reasons why they become depressed is because in the state of lack that they are in, they begin to feel there is a mindset that steps in that makes them feel that simply because they can't afford this amount or they can't afford this need, they are of less value than who they are the devil makes you begin to think of yourself lesser than the value that god places on you if only you know that you have been redeemed and the most precious thing in the universe which is the life of god by the spirit of god has been placed inside of you so whether i have the money to buy it or not it does not reduce my status it doesn't reduce my value i am who i am in christ jesus somebody say amen to that that's what it means to be more than a conqueror. Number two, to be more than a conqueror means to be an overcomer in and through Christ. An overcomer in and through Christ. In and through Christ. I wish I had time to explain that. In and through Christ. What does it mean to be an overcomer in Christ? It means rising above situation and circumstances. You know, it starts from a mentality. And then it becomes an actual reality. That there is something at work inside of you. That makes you rise in the midst of circumstances and situation. Where that fuel is 100 naira, you are living well. Where that it becomes 1000 naira, nothing changes. You see, these are the times when these realities will be tested. The problems that we are facing nationally or globally are, a, are at best a simulation. The best kind of simulation to test the understanding of who we are in Christ. So to be an overcomer in Christ means to rise above situation and circumstances. It also means to keep the forces of darkness at bay. An ability by the Holy Spirit that makes a believer walk victoriously. That makes a believer walk as a champion. The ability to subdue, to bring down that subjection and to bring under control the forces of darkness. Remember what he said there. He said neither angels, nor principalities, nor powers. What did he say in 1 John chapter 4 verse 4? He said, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome the world. Have overcome, past tense. Why? For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That, that's what it means to be an overcomer. That you have an understanding and you are walking in the actual reality of the truth. That there is a life at work in you 
that makes you overcome the forces of the enemy that makes you rise above the situation and circumstances of life that makes you keep rising in the midst of frustration that makes you keep standing in the midst of attacks he said having done all to stand when our backs are against the walls and it looks as if it was over you made a way and now we stand in here only because you made a way so the attacks that the enemy they calculated everything they planned everything it took the enemy six months to plan that single attack on your life but after stoning everything at you and then the dust clears off they discover that you are still standing look at the life of job for for god's sake in one day his family went down in one day his investments everything he had worked for if everything is lost what is there to live for again even your children that should maybe comfort you in your old age they're all dead the bible says job stood up and worshipped in the midst of that that's what it means to be an overcomer in christ is a mentality that you that you are driven with you know this is the aspect of christianity where it is not corporate oh. it's not everybody there's a level of conviction that has to deepen into your soul let me give you more scriptures we are talking about being an overcomer in christ first john 5 verse 4 he said for whatever is born of god overcome it, the world Huh? I like that I say whatever. I didn't say whosoever. He said whatever. First of all, it means you because you have been born of God. He said, First John chapter three verse two. What is it? Beloved, now are we the sons of God? So to be born of God, first of all, means you yourself. You are an offspring of divinity, and then it also means everything that you give birth to from your spirit, everything that proceeds from you. Is also born of God because you are born of God. Go back to First John five four. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory of them that overcomes. He says, even our faith. So one who is an overcomer in Christ is one that walks by faith. The Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. And I'm going to explain what faith is because many of us think simply because you are, you seem to be weighed down by the challenges that you are facing you think that your faith your faith has failed no you see let me tell you something faith is not just about getting results faith is not just that thing that you can have in god like an atm machine that keeps vomiting all the good things of life that you want of course faith is your access not only to the realm of the spirit but also to the storehouses of heaven it is by faith that we will receive everything that comes from god but faith is also the resolve to be steadfast in God regardless of the situation. They say, oh king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. The God that we serve, he will deliver us. He said, but if he doesn't deliver us, let it be known to you this day that we shall not bow. That's faith. Faith is believing God for divine healing and your mother is sick with kidney disease you confess the scripture you fast you pray you keep declaring words of healing you keep anointing and praying for her and she dies in the process if after that death you still believe that god heals that's faith if as a man of god after that death you can still go for a healing service and tell them the same yesterday today and forever that's faith you, you now see so we can just simply you can examine your life and know if what you have is faith or wish to be more than a conqueror is to be an overcomer psalm 16 verse 8 he said i have set the lord always before me the lord is at my right hand because he's at my right hand i shall not be moved 
I, my right hand doesn't mean literally that God is standing by your right hand. No. It means that God becomes your favorite and your only secured point of trust. In other words, when God becomes your only option, he said, because I have made God my only option, I will not be moved. Did the Bible not say, they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion? That can, there's something, there's a conviction they have because of their knowledge of God that makes them unmovable, that makes them an overcomer. Even in the midst of spiritual warfare, in a season of attacks, you smile and laugh and dance because you know that at the end of the day, you will weary out the devil. You know that you will come out of this and you will come out victorious. That's what it means to be an overcomer. An overcomer. Never has anybody come to meet me and tell me, Apostle, there's a problem. And I say, oh God, what do we do now? No. I know, there's no need to say, oh God, what do we do now? Because I know that the solution will come from him. That's why the Bible says in Luke chapter 18, when Jesus was teaching them how to pray and he spoke, gave the parable about the widow that wearied out the unjust judge, Jesus said that if the Son of Man comes on earth, shall he find faith? Will he find people that still trust him in the midst of trials and circumstances? Will he find people whose faith are so magnified beyond even the circumstance? Bigger than all my problems Bigger than everything God is bigger than every mountain I cannot, cannot see Bigger than all my problems Oh, bigger than everything God is bigger than every mountain I can not only the mountain you can see even the one you cannot see that means including the problems in the future the god i serve is still bigger than them even when the more you pray they are giving you bad news he's bigger i wanted to sing a song but i don't know whether you will know that song now to be more than a conqueror means to be an overcomer beat your chest and say i'm an overcomer in Christ Jesus. Forget about what you are going through. In fact, the reason why you can even be bold enough to profess that is because what you are going through now is not compared to what you have gone through. The track record of problems that you have been through and came out of. This one. Not <laughs> no, you think about it for a while. You and the problems, you and the challenges. Which one has an expiry date? I told somebody recently, I said, there are only two people that have the power of life and death. God and you. Not the devil. The psalmist says in Psalms 118, he said, the Lord has chastened me sore, but he has not given me over to death. So no matter, the devil can attack you. He can do anything. He can even cause accidents. He can break your leg and you are, you are that orthopedic section of the hospital. And then he comes to your ears and tell you that you are going to be here for a long time. When he tells you that, ask him. Shea will come out. The only permission God didn't give him. You see what God told Satan? When Satan went with a case against Job. God told him, he said, you can touch everything he has. But his life. And like Job, he said, for I know my Redeemer lives. And he shall stand at last on the earth. He said that even though this skin is destroyed. I know that yet in my flesh I will see God. Number three, what does it mean to be more than a conqueror? A more than a conqueror is one who suffers for the sake of the kingdom. I know you will not like this one, but it's part of the message. A more than a conqueror is one who suffers. Somebody shout suffer. Some of you so hate that word. It's good to hate the world, but don't ignore it. Suffer. One who suffers for the sake of the kingdom. Romans chapter 8 verse 17 to 18. 
Paul was talking about the reality of our sonship. He says that if we are children, then we are heirs. We are joint heirs of God and heirs with Christ. We are joint heirs with Christ and heirs of God. He said, if we suffer with him, we shall what? Be glorified with him. Verse 18 says, for I reckon, he said, I consider that the sufferings, now that I've mentioned about suffering, and glorification let me let you know that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us that's why you must stay alive regardless of what you are going through you must stay alive you must keep your confession of faith steadfast because the bible says there is yet a glory that will be revealed in you god will take more pleasure and more glory in coming into your life after all of this mess and bringing beauty and honor that's when he would do because people will say around you that we knew him we knew where he started from it means to suffer for the kingdom that's what it means to be more than a conqueror it seems as though suffering is one of the price that we will pay for the advancement of the kingdom you know, the ultimate sacrifice of redemption has been paid, which was the blood of Jesus. So in that context, there is no other sacrifice that should be made. There is no other price that should be paid. But now that we have been saved and brought into the kingdom, for that kingdom to manifest and to grow in us and to be advanced through us, there will be prices we will pay. For you to know this God who has saved you and dwells in you, there will be prices you will pay. And it has been, or God has so factored it out, that there will be moments when physically you will have to suffer for him. I say physically because if you check from the context of the realm of the spirit, that suffering you are going through has no weight. It's of no relevance in the realm of the spirit. The reason is because it is conditional, it is temporal. And spirits are eternal. Spirits are perpetual. So that suffering you are going through now makes no sense to them. That's the reason why God can feel your pain, but he will not cry with you. Do you understand what I said? Let me go over it again. I've said it before, that God in his dealings with man is not emotional, but is compassionate. He knows what you are going through. Because once he was a man and he went through it. But the reason why he will not cry and give in to depression and despair like you is because you are the one that is trapped in your humanity now going through that circumstance. But God who dwells, he doesn't even dwell in eternity. He created eternity. God who dwells in the realm that is beyond your physical realm. He has already gone. The Bible calls him the Alpha Omega. He is at the beginning and the end at the same time. He has gone ahead and seen that in two years' time, you became, you became so blessed that if they told people you were once in debt, they would never believe. That's why he comes to you when you are suffering and you are crying, Oh God, help me, help me. He comes and begins to give you instruction. He came to Gideon, he said, You are a mighty man of valor. Gideon said, Ah, he, he was looking for sympathy. He said, if, if God is with me and with us, why are we going through this? Why are, why are our enemies done this and that to us? Did God answer him? No. God spoke to him and gave him instruction. Go and save them with, in this might. So it looks like God is not emotional. It looks like God is not sympathetic. It's true. God is not sympathetic. He's compassionate. You need more of compassion than sympathy. Sympathy doesn't change the problem. I'm not saying that you should not sympathize with people. But as an individual, what you need in that situation is not sympathy. It's compassion. And the Bible says that he has tied that compassion to his mercies. And the Bible says that his mercies fail not. That they are new every morning. There is enough provision that can salvage you from that situation. Regardless of what you are going through. What you are going through now, you are not the first to go through it in human history. We are talking about a God that has been before any human was created. It means to suffer. Can I show you one interesting scripture? First Peter chapter 3. From verse 4. Thank you very much. It says, Beloved, think it not strange 
concerning the very trial which is to try you as though so wait i hope you are reading with me which is to what not which is i've tried which is to what try you that means it's coming i said god at least haba don't don't tell us that trials will come just tell us that it's going to be ice cream all through so that when the trials come we'll not know he said no don't consider it strange for the trials that are ahead of you some of you have been in that trial for 10 years now 10 10 so this message is for you he said take it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you don't think as if it's an attack from the enemy or oh, God doesn't know what is happening. No, it's not strange. Go on. He said, But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ, of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God rested. This is what you get as a result of the sufferings that you will have to go through for the kingdom. He said the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. When you have to suffer for the sake of the kingdom. And most times we suffer because we decide to clinch to our faith in God. Or we decide not to compromise. It's not like there are things you couldn't do to be able to come out of that mess that you are in. But because of your faith and your steadfastness in God, and then you have to pay the price. I've seen situations where ladies were offered jobs in exchange for their bodies. And because they refused holding on to purity and holiness, they had to suffer three years unemployed. I've seen situations where somebody simply because of his faith is denied by his entire family members since you decide to serve jesus let jesus take care of you i know a preacher who said one time he traveled overseas and while he was there god spoke to him and told him to gather all that he had all the money he had and he took it to another preacher a senior preacher and the preacher prayed for him and went into the room back and then he stood there after that act and discovered there was not he had nothing again where will he pay his hotel bills how will he feed how will he return back to nigeria he called his wife the wife said okay the god of that person eh let him take care of you <laughs> amen when you have to suffer do you know that this gospel that we are preaching this christianity that we profess that we have so compromised in this our day and time that we are almost we have made it of, of of so much ridicule that it no longer holds the respect it used to have again do you know that this gospel came to us through the lives of people who suffered and died for its sake think of it some of them were whipped how many of you will even stand and insult let alone that you are whipped in public i'm talking about the fathers hello happy father's day The Bible said that they flogged the apostles in a public sphere, you know, space. And you know the way they flogged those days? They would tear your clothes. It's on your bare back. It's not that one you used to do in secondary school where you wear four knicker. And then you, you chest decay. No. In the prophetic writings of Isaiah in chapter 5 of, uh, sorry, chapter 50, sorry, of Isaiah chapter 50 verse 5 jesus was speaking there you know prophetically he said i gave my back to the smiters verse 6 rather he said i gave my back to the smiters that's why i say by his stripes some of them were flocked some of them were thrown in prison some of them were exiled from their hometown some of them were fed to lions in fact one of the emperors there was a particular spot he used to do he would hang christians on poles and set fire on them so that they can become the street lights in the night but now look at that's the that's what they did 
to pass on the gospel to us but right now because somebody doesn't have transport he has denied god denied jesus denied the holy ghost and say god the day you come through for me i will come back to church to trek to church because you don't have fuel in your car is now is our situation but the bible says in that go back to that first peter chapter 4 verse 14 he say happy are you if you suffer for the name of christ how much reproach have you taken for god how much shame have you borne? you think you are the only one bearing the shame that's why but you have forgotten that the bible says that he's dwelling inside of you so if you take the shame he's taking the shame with you for we do not have a high priest who is not touched by our infirmities there's actually nothing that you have to go through now for the gospel that is too big or too small to be more than a conqueror also means to suffer what did paul say he said henceforth let no man trouble me for i bear where's the badge on my body the what the marks If we don't have Christians who are solid and steadfast in their faith and their work with God in these last days, there'll be problem because greater persecutions are ahead. Let me tell you the truth. Don't think it's going to be sweet all the way. No, there will be times where you'll be challenged. Some of you, what you have not seen in your future is that you will have to be thrown into jail for the sake of the gospel. Yes, I'm not. It's not bad prophecy. I'm just telling you. That's why God has not shown you that future. The future is showing you is la Range Rover, Land Rover. But between you and that Land Rover, do you know that you are going to sleep in the jail? Do you know that you are going to take slap for him? He will not show you that one because if he shows you, you run away. That you wake up one morning and all your life savings, 5 million, 10 million, it just disappears. It's liquidated overnight and there's no explanation for it. And God will still be God. Jesus told the disciples, He said, No one who has left father or mother and followed me, He said that they will have 100% in this life and in the life to come. Then He began to list the things that they will have. I think that's in Mark's gospel. He said they will have riches and possessions. He mentioned all the good things. Then he said, and persecution and tribulation. And one pastor said, the reason is because you will become so wealthy that they will have to criticize and persecute you. Some of you are going to be ministers, music ministers, word ministers, and there will be scandals that will take your name. And you will have to go through that season, not because God is wicked to you, but it is the price that you will have to pay. It has, been, it has been programmed in your destiny before you were born. That you will bear your own reproach for Jesus. But the Bible says in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Number four, to be more than a conqueror means one who takes sides with the will of God. One who takes sides with the will of God regardless of the situation. One who takes sides with the will of God, regardless of the situation. <laughs> what did Jesus say in Luke chapter 22, verse 42? Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. He said, if it is your will that I take, take this cup away from me, nevertheless, not my will. That was the cup of suffering. He said, but let it be your will, even if it's your will that I have to suffer. A man that is glued to the will of God regardless, you know, it's no longer raining again no, these days. When you say will of God, people look at you as old school. Because they feel that the will of God, it too, they take time. It too slow. But Job said, all the days of my appointed time will I wait. To be more than a conqueror means taking side with God's will, regardless of the situation. Psalms 1 verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. 
and in it he does meditate day and night he said for he shall be because he takes sides with the will of god and he makes the will of god become law to himself he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers it's not easy oh, to accept the will of god oh. let me tell you the truth so you are an anointed prophet that god is training but your problem is like you like fair women like fair women and you have already eyed one now in the service that this this one must be the spirit dot rested upon her and god said no that's not that's not the one then during a prayer session god turns you to a, a dark lady who is praying with so many sweat around her and god said that's your wife he said no god i didn't see where S sweat was in my eye I had the story of a young man who went to he went to a restaurant and saw a beautiful girl eating and he said ah this must be the, the anointed of god for me then he went and sat near her and you know did all the gisting and everything in his mind he has gotten a baby a damsel when it was time for the lady to go she thanked him say it was nice meeting you and all of that he was even arranging another date only for him to discover that when she stood up she reached her hand to the side and took a crutch and started walking with the crutch he went back and collected his complimentary but he said no 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 taking sides with the will of god how many of you will take sides with god's will for your destiny the thing is in fact knowing the will is even an issue because sometimes you will have to pray and stay for long sometimes god will leave you there with questions unanswered and if you are if you have been there before where there were questions you couldn't answer welcome that is true christianity because when jesus asked the question on the cross father why has thou forsaken me was there an answer okay they call it death jam isn't it no, that's that is slang young people use they call it death jam so to our appearance when you hear death jam it means somebody behaves as if he doesn't hear what you're saying taking sides with god's will the bible said in acts chapter 5 29 the disciples told the apostles told the elders of israel the pharisees they say whether we should obey god or men say you decide for yourself he said but we ought to obey god rather than men taking side with god's will number five what does it mean to be more than a conqueror it means one who believes in the power of resurrection and walks in it one who believes in the power of resurrection and walks in it there's something we need to understand about the concept of resurrection because minus resurrection we have no gospel the reason why we have a gospel the reason why we have faith is because we believe that jesus died for our sins and was raised for our salvation for our justification if jesus died and was buried and did not resurrect then we have our faith is useless in fact in first corinthians 15 he says then our faith is in vain he said and if we are in this life alone we have hope we have all men most miserable there will be no difference between christianity and all the other religions in the world what makes us outstanding beyond just a religion to be in a practical experience is something called the power of resurrection paul said in philippians 3 verse 10 to 11 he said that i may know him and the power of his resurrection that is the only thing that makes christianity outstanding and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto death he says so that by any means i might attain the resurrection that means i believe not only that he died and was resurrected but that even here and now i can experience that power at work in my life somebody say how romans chapter 6 verse 4 it says that we were buried with him in baptism so that as christ was raised by from the dead by the glory of the father even so we will walk in the newness of life when jesus died he was a dead body it took the spirit of god to raise him from the dead the bible says even so that's how our christian experience will be that as a christian when you come into christ it will be the spirit of god living through you 
It will be the spirit of God alive through you. Otherwise, Christianity will be subjected to rules, to regulations and laws. Am I talking to somebody? If you, you think that the New Testament is easier than the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, they say an eye for an eye. A tooth for a tooth. In the New Testament, what did he say? Since you like New Testament and all of that. He said, love your enemies. And bless those who persecute you. Meanwhile, in the night, you stood up. After they stole your phone. You stood up. Anybody that stole that phone, I cursed you. I cursed you. Say every witch around here, stubborn go liar. In wait, there's there's a time to do that. Listen, there's a time to pray that kind of prayer, eh? But the truth is, it's not every time you pray to. He said, love your enemies. In the Old Testament, he said, tight bring offering. In the New Testament, say all that you have belongs to him. Which one do you think is better? No, can we continue the comparison? Alright. Including you, you. That's it now. I beseech you therefore, be, dearly beloved, that you present yourself and live yourself. Everything where, where you get now. I know how to use vernacular English. So, it is the power of resurrection that helps you live what I call the life of the spirit. It is the power of resurrection because your flesh is used to all its lusts and always wants to trap you to a place of sin. It will take a higher law for there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is a law that you subject yourself to and then as a result it has set you free from the law of sin and death so resurrection is not only when somebody who is dead physically comes back resurrection also is that those who are now alive are not only alive for themselves but they are alive to live for him so things that a man of the flesh cannot cope with they receive grace to walk in do you understand what i'm saying that's what it means to be more than a conqueror for instance fasting is a problem you can't miss your breakfast that's when you remember the advice of the doctor that breakfast is the most important meal of the day you know they've given me the advice many times and I thank God for doctors. They are wonderful people. I have some of them close to me. And I take their advice. So, but the only advice I don't take is when you are saying, I should go on an eating spree and not fast. No. That one is dead sentence. Amen. Uh -huh. No, that one is. You give me a drug for 30 days. Ha. Uh. You, you say, you didn't, you ask yourself, is he a pastor you gave that drug? If it was a normal believer, yes, but you, how can I for 30 days just be eating, you know, and that's how they used to they convince you. Say so you need to eat very well before you take this drug. It's strong antibiotic. It's true. Eat very well. When is the season to eat? Eat. But when is the season to fast? Fast. Now some of you, the life in the flesh will not allow you to fast. For some of you, prayer is a difficulty. But the power of resurrection is what activates the ability to go beyond the weakness of the flesh and tap into the grace that comes from the spirit verse 10 of that same romans chapter 8 what did he say 10 and 11 he said and if you are christ then the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is alive because of righteousness he said but if the spirit of him that raised christ from the dead dwells in you he that raised christ from the dead shall quicken the word quicken means to revitalize to, to, to it means to amplify to cause to come alive in other words, another energy beyond the realm of the flesh. So resurrection is not only when somebody dies and lives again. It's that somebody can live the superior life of Christ even on earth. Resurrection also means to be able to bring to subjection the flesh and its lust. And be alive and live 
in the spirit. Remember my teaching last week, a burning and a shining light. As resurrection. And you live like that, believing and knowing that a time will come when the Lord Jesus will return to rapture us. That your loved ones who have died, who may have decayed in the ground, the Bible says that the dead in Christ will rise first. That's why it is this kind of hope that comforts you in the midst of depression when you lose a loved one. That you look at that body that is going down to the ground. You may miss that person physically, but you realize that a day will come where that same person will be raised like Jesus was raised and you'll be united with them never to part ways again. It's called the hope of resurrection. That hope can keep you alive. Instead of you mourning and sulking, three months have passed, the person you are still mourning, say, hey, the death of this of a loved one is not something you can understand. No, it will come. No, 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 no. When my mother died, I asked them at the, at, when they were going for the internment, I said, I want to see her body. I've not seen her since she died. Hey! They advised my father. They said, no, 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 no. Say, we don't know what will happen. He may faint or he may. My father said, you see what there is? I say, it's my mother. I want to see her. I told him, don't worry. God has comforted me. You, you can't comfort me. And when they opened the casket and I saw, I saw that she died peacefully. That tells me where she has gone to. And from that day till today, until the day I leave this world, my hope is that one day I will see her again. And you know the wonderful thing about resurrection? That when they resurrect again, all the deformities that they had physically will be gone. If the person had one leg before he died, at the resurrection, you will have two legs. That's why you must make heaven know. If you think you are beautiful, wait, let's see at the other side. When the glory of God is upon you. So, being a more than a conqueror is having the hope. Believing in the power of resurrection. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength. I don't know the song, please help me. This cornerstone, this solid ground, is to the first of his right and stone. Don't worry, we'll get the song and sing it. Oh, what? chapter 14 verse 19 Jesus said because I live ye shall live also it is your believing in the power of resurrection that keeps you alive till that day now quickly before we pray please be seated how can I live in the realm of more than a conqueror now that I understand what it means to be more than a conqueror how do I live in that realm? How do I live in that reality? Very quickly and then we'll pray. Number one, you must be born again. You must be born again. John 1, 12 to 13 says, But as many as received him to them, he gave power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believed in his name, who were born not of the will of flesh of man, but of God. When you are born again, that's the first step to living in that realm of being more than a conqueror. 1 Peter 1, 23, what does he say? Quickly, you must be born again. He said, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides. If that is the raw material for your new birth, 
That means longevity has been attached to you. That means the ability to be victorious and an overcomer has been fragmented inside of you. It starts by being born again. And that is why every believer must treasure your salvation experience. Number two, how you can live in that realm of being more than a conqueror. You must submit completely and wholeheartedly to the authority of God's word. You must submit completely and wholeheartedly to the authority of God's word. 1 John 2 from verse 13 to 14. You must submit to the authority. The word of God must be the authority over your life. It must be the final say. Your life must be governed by the dictates of the word of God. That is what gives you access into that reality of being more than a conqueror. He said, I write to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you little children because you have known the father. Verse 14, I have written to you fathers because you have known him from the, who is from the beginning. I have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome. You must submit to the authority of the word of God. Don't try to, don't try to question or try to, 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 to conflict with what scripture says. You can bring your life to a point where it is totally aligned with the dictates of scripture. You may look strange to your generation. You may look strange to the people around you. But if your life can be totally governed by God's word. What did Jesus say in John 15? He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. He said, then you shall ask anything in my name. And it shall be done for you. That my father may be glorified. How did Jesus overcome the enemy? It is written. It is written. It is written. The authority of God's word. Not just in knowing, but in obedience, in doing it. For instance, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 24 says, And a servant of God must not quarrel. So, your holiness experience is not only on Sunday. Then on Monday at the filling station, somebody drives his car before you into the queue to get fuel. And then you stand up and say, I go show you, say, I'm from Delta. I go show you, I'm from Delta. And then your, your fellow brethren, your, your, believer, your believing sister is telling you, please calm down, let's just say, no, 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 no. Let me teach them that Christianity is not stupidity. No. Put it there. He said, and a servant of the Lord. He's not talking about pastors alone. All of us, we are servants of God. Must not correct. Must not. I know you quarreled with your roommate before you came. Must not correct. It looks like when you live under, under submission to the authority of God's word, it looks like you are in chains. Isn't it? Because the word of God will so narrow the path ahead of you you are not allowed to do whatever you want but do you know that that is where true freedom is the bible calls it the perfect law of liberty that is how people can see the life of christ through you again when the bible says rejoice always and you remember that when you are going through a hard time you have to submit to the authority of the word not to your emotions I don't know why a believer should live their life driven by emotions. Say, hey, you know now, I'm a lady, I'm emotional. Where is he written? No, where is he written? Why will you live being dictated, uh, you know, being governed by your emotions? Emotions are as cloud. If the wind blows, they can pass away. Most times you get depressed and when you come out from that depression, if they ask you why were you depressed you can't point to one thing emotions are not stable the bible says the word of god leave it and i bide it forever even if your life may not be producing the result keep staying on the word keep staying there keep living in it 
keep walking in obedience a day will come where you will bear fruit remember the parable of the sower the last set of seeds that fell on good ground he said these are those who heard the word and received it and bore fruit with patience patience it may take time the excellency of the life of the spirit does not manifest at once it takes time there's process tell your neighbor stay with the word number three how do you how can you live in the realm of being more than a conqueror you must daily yield to the leading of the spirit you must daily yield to the leading of the spirit galatians 5 16 to 18 says walk in the spirit that you will not fulfill the laws of the flesh you must yield to the spirit in isaiah 30 verse 21 he says you shall hear a voice behind you that will say this is the way walk in it when you turn to the left or to the right the voice of the spirit that is within you that is the best way by which god can direct you that is the best way by which your life can be controlled or navigated many of us have replaced the holy spirit for probability we have replaced the holy spirit with life uh, with time and chance a lot of guesswork among believers can you submit to his leading and i agree that sometimes the leading of the spirit in fact all that all the times the leading of the spirit will always be opposed to the pleasure of the flesh but remember when you yield to the life of the spirit the bible says you are not under the law go back to that galatians let me show them something he said you are not under the law of the flesh the only way out of being controlled by the nature of the flesh is to walk and yield to the spirit he said i said then walk in the spirit that you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh go on for the flesh lost against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things which you wish go on but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law it is the spirit of god that helps you to live up the fullness of your victorious life when you yield to him so sometimes he will tell you don't go out till 3 p.m then you stubbornly go out by 10 because you told somebody that i'll meet you there sometimes the holy spirit is still merciful he still saves you from the accident but if you are sensitive you will hear his quiet voice in the midst of that accident but i told you not to go out i remember years ago we used to have midweek service in my church in abuja then thursday was prayer meeting and in the morning heavy rain fell we woke up after devotion my immediate younger sister told my dad then we're still very small that's around 2007 8 there about he said daddy i dreamt and god said you should not go to church see ah not go to church i was glad when they said let us go i hope you know said i also quoted scripture so you see the scriptures is a compendium of knowledge the knowledge of the ways of god but just like a map you need someone that understands the route there is a difference between the map and the route the map is the broad picture to show you the route to where you are going to so it's the holy spirit that will navigate through scripture and show you which one is relevant for now that was why even when satan quoted scripture to jesus for he shall give his angels charge over thee that psalms 91 verse 10 or 11 rather to keep thee in all thy ways the spirit of god remember he was full of the spirit jesus had another scripture he said thou shalt worship the lord thy god only and him only shall thou serve yield to the spirit you must learn to hear his voice and he's in every one of us it starts by you being conscious that he's with you and then you will hear him to a point where he will make his voice so custom made to your thoughts that when you think it's like he's the one thinking at that point your mind has been totally renewed by scripture it's not now that you don't even know one scriptural verse that you will say your thought is the holy ghost so don't try it 
That's why you made that investment and if you, you failed. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in it he doth meditate day and night. It is at that point that the light of the spirit can shine in the life of that man. It is that kind of man that he can think and his thoughts are of God. Not the one that is even struggling to... Can we close? Are you getting blessed? Number four, finally. What to do to live in the realm of being more than a conqueror? You must be ready to endure temptations and afflictions. You must be ready to endure temptations and afflictions. Temptations and afflictions. One of them is a battle between you and situation. The other one is a battle between you and yourself. You hear what I'm saying? When it comes to afflictions and trials, that is a battle between you and circumstances and situations. When the odds are stuck against you. But when it comes to temptation, it is a battle between you and yourself. There is a big difference between temptation and affliction. If, for instance, now I want to say this respectfully speaking, I'm not trying to talk about anybody, but let me just say this because I believe it will help every one of us believers. If, for instance, you have a young man who struggles with a lust for money, for instance, I would have used immorality, but you know, I don't want some eyes looking at me here. Let's say somebody he has a lust. Lust means a strong desire, an uncontrolled desire. So desires were meant to be controlled. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 13, that if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. So that's how you control your desires by the spirit. You submit that desire. To the spirit of God that is in you. So if you have a man that has lost for money. For instance. Let me differentiate between affliction. And temptation. Affliction. Is maybe when there is no money. And he has a need. Or. Affliction. Is when he is in a system. And he is being forced. To steal what does not belong to him. Not like he's enticed, he's forced. Are you hearing me? That one now is affliction. The odds are stuck against him. But temptation is when you know you have a lust for money. Then you carry yourself and stay around people who, would, who do illegitimate businesses to get money i hope you know you, you are the one who made them your friends so when they try to entice you to join them and do what they are doing don't say it's affliction no. don't quote scripture and say many are the afflictions of righteous they are, they are forcing me they're not forcing you you took you carry your leg go there proverbs say if sinners entice you consent that not in fact at some point when it's talking about the things that young people face he say flee but you carry your leg over there. You went to the nightclub with them in the name of, they say they will give me money. Then later you now say, eh, it was the devil. Which devil? Did the devil carry your two legs there? That's temptation. In the face of one, there are circumstances beyond your control. In the face of the other one, there are circumstances against you because of an affinity that they have with a side of your flesh or with unbridled desires now every one of us at some point will face one of these can i tell you something there will be points where you will have to endure somebody say endure let me give you an expression of an example of the you know the meaning of the word endure How many of you have seen where military people are being trained? Or maybe they are in a parade. How many of you have seen a parade? A full parade before? Believe you me, many of you sat down. 
you saw it sitting down a full parade can go more than an hour you see those guys stand at ease at one spot for a long time in fact the rule because i went to a military school the rule is that no matter how tired you are no matter how afflicted you are if you must fall you can't just fall anyhow if you are at ease with your gun you know like a guard now you must come to attention and fall straight head down somebody say amen to that all right that, don't change your mind no you say you will send your son to military school don't send him there he needs that discipline you will have to come to attention and fall head straight and you may even remain there medical attention may not come immediately that's what it means to endure james chapter 1 verse 12 blessed is the man who what endures it is a rebuke it is a resist who endures temptation so every day the enticement is strong but you must endure you want to fast six to six and by 12 the smell of kunu is in the fridge you know kunu kunu will not, never smell it's that day that kunu will have that's when you remember oh i'm an ulcer patient ah. <laughs> which one is ulcer patient The Bible says what? Endure. And one of the ways to, to, to gain mastery in endurance in the midst of challenges is where the temporal gratification you are about to receive for the glory that is ahead. That fast you want to break by 12 because of, and most times when you want to break that fast, eh, it's things that are, you, on a normal day you will not eat it, granite cashew nut cashew nut that somebody kept in his bag for three days they didn't open that's what you want to fall for if only you can weigh it with the spiritual benefit that is ahead with the glory that is ahead that temptation of a hundred thousand of one million of ten million every man you know that the people of the world will say every man has a price that is true when you don't know how to endure our Lord Jesus, the Bible says, who for the joy of what was set ahead of him, endured the pain. We don't have believers that can endure these days. A lot of people are afraid of pain. Let me tell you something. Pain is not an end. It doesn't kill. Pain is a teacher. I know a medical person may not agree with me, but it's the truth. If pain kills, every pain should kill. I know there's a level of pain that your body cannot take it. But now I'm talking about emotional pain. I'm talking about pain in terms of reality. Pain is not an end. It's a teacher. And the first lesson that it will teach you is that you are not yet dead. Wait, you don't understand what I said. If, for instance, you fall down, injure your leg, and there's blood gushing out, some of you are the sight of blood. Hey! You just start crying. And then you begin to feel pains. The reason why you are feeling that pain is that you are still alive. Which is what you should thank God for. Because if you were dead, you will not feel pain. Did you hear what I said? Okay, not everybody heard what I said. So that means that the reason why you should learn to endure pain in that circumstance is that you are still alive. And because you are alive, there is hope ahead. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. It's just hunger for one day. It doesn't take away the future of abundance that is ahead of you. We cry too much in pain. Every small thing you cry, you need prayer for. There is no one situation in your life that you should allow to happen for your faith to be tested. Every small situation that comes, you need prayer from a man of God. There will be a day where the man of God's phone will not be on. And your faith will have to go through that pain. That end, you will have to enjoy it. If Jesus had given up on his way to the cross, I hope you know there will be no existence of you and I. There will be no hope. 
if you are talking about pain killing somebody it would have killed him before he got to the cross he was so much in pain he had lost blood a, someone had to carry the cross for him but he endured Hebrews 11 last scripture before we pray Hebrews 11 24 to 25 let me show you something then and then we'll pray Hebrews 11 24 he said by faith Moses when he became of age refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter go on choosing rather to suffer affliction choosing rather with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin do you know that there will be times where just because you are a Christian that's the reason why you are going through the pain and I'm talking about pain that may be perpetual at some point than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin go ahead he said, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. Tell your neighbor, there's a reward. There's a reward ahead. Even if God allows you to die poor, cheer up, be encouraged. You may be poor in this life, but you are rich in glory. Somebody say, ah, apostle, there's... that one don't make sense now. Why will I why will I not enjoy all these things and just die and go? You see, in heaven I will enjoy those things. Okay, another scripture for you. What shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world? Since it's scripture, scripture, let's go now. That for me to exchange my faith in Christ Jesus, except if you don't understand the value of your salvation, that for me to exchange it for a morsel of bread. Than for me to exchange it for a job opportunity just deny jesus now some of you are students you will even see it on your campus people who came into campus as christians but they will change religion not because they love the religion but because of money material things you go and look at those people after a while you will find the the exact definition of misery must learn to endure temptation he said count it all joy my brethren when you go through trials and tribulations knowing this that the trial of your faith worketh patience he said and let patience have its perfect work in you that is james chapter 1 verse 3 he said for then you shall be perfect wanting nothing when he says let patience it means go through the the process Go through the furnace. Enjoy it. Now you don't have money in your account. No job. You are almost always stranded. Go through it. I know you have been praying for a job for a while. And you keep attending interviews. But there is no job coming. And yet you keep praying every day. Go through it, sir. Go through it, man. Enjoy the pain. There is glory ahead. Every season prepares you for the next season. It doesn't matter how long it takes. But I know that my Redeemer lives. And he shall stand at last and the end. There is hope at the end of the day. There is light at the end of that tunnel. Go through it. When we started this walk, it looked like we were joking. Abi, We faced all kinds of things. Till a point where I was no longer ashamed of anything. There were times when I was broke. That time we, we used to meet at the university. There was a time where in the afternoon to go for meeting. Me that was going to preach that God will supply needs. I didn't have money. I had 15 naira. I had to trek part of the journey. From Dambua Road to the university. I have to trek part. Then when I'm getting close to the other part, I enter Napep. And you have to hold two handkerchiefs. One for your face, one for your shoe so that when you arrive they will not say that you but you know what every time i did that nothing there was there was no there was no sadness in me because unfortunately for the devil i had gotten to know all these things i shared with you today i knew who i was in christ so my value for myself was not based on what i had it was based on what i carried inside of me so regardless of the lack i knew I remember those days somebody used to tell me John you remember 
when we used to trek in the evening like this, we say we are going for sightseeing. There's no food to eat, too. so we stroll around so that when we come back, we are tired. We we'll just go and sleep. Then you wake up the next day, and he will tell me, he said, "Apostle, do you know that a day will come where to have this pleasure, this leisure of walking on the road like this, you will not be able to. People will be looking for you. I looked at you. I said, ah, why, why they, why they whine me?" We have not even anywhere yet and it's already like that now. There's almost no place I go to that I don't see. So most times if we go out, even to go to a supermarket, I have to stay in the car. But just a few years ago. So why do you think or why do you allow your hope to be dashed now when the glory is still ahead? God sent me to encourage somebody today. You may not have in your hand the things that you are looking for. Though it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. Your life may still be the opposite of the confession. Every Sunday we confess the I am confession. Now you don't even confess again because after confessing for many weeks, nothing changed in your life. Don't worry. Something is actually changing. Your mindset is changing. You may have nothing in the physical. What did Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16? He said, though our outward man perisheth, yet our inward man is renewed he said for our light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding weight of glory is greater than you can imagine is stronger than you can carry some of you the future that is close to you will, will land you into multi-millions that if they told you that you were ever poor before you will never believe some of you your life right now all the misery that you have seen is a perfect motivation for a generation i'm telling you the truth you wait until you step into your days of glory then god tells you everything you went through write it in a book and the bible says of abel that though he is dead yet his blood is speaking that's a life a, a, a biography that will mentor even the coming generation some of you what is ahead of you is that god has planned that the day just one day will come where he will lift you from the backside of the desert and place you in the palace of destiny so that it will be said of your life that god is the helper and lifter of men that's what he wants to do with you that's why things are going from bad to worse because at the end god wants to sign a signature with your life It won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect the concerning me sooner or later, sooner or later. Oh, you turn in my favor. Oh, He's turning around. So you are a man of God and God has called you to ministry. And after one year, you are still struggling with five people coming for meeting. Don't worry. You just keep building yourself. Preach to those five as if you are preaching to nations. Because the day God will open the doors of nations to you, it will be the same messages you were preaching then that you will preach. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. There's no new revelation. It's just your life that would have been translated from glory to glory. Some of you that God has given you songs. But the, 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 the things you are going through now, you are so mocked by them that you don't even want anybody to know about those songs. Keep those songs alive. Oh. Because the day will come where you will stand to sing for 15 minutes and somebody is offering you the whole world. It will be the same song. That song you got when they stole your phone on your way to on your way back from service they stole your phone and your money you have to trek home instead of god to send a, a samaritan to take you home he allowed you to trek and in your trekking he gave you a song that is the same song when you stand on the global stage i'm telling you the first time i had the opportunity to pray for a, a millionaire and he knelt down I won't even tell you the story because you will not even believe it. And I was praying. You know what happened? Words were coming out of my mouth, but inside of me I was thinking. I said, is it the same hand? I 
remember when I was the, when, my, when my mother passed away you know I was in Abuja for the burial when it was time to come back we came in through a military flight thank God we had landed I was going out of the the um, Air Force base well used to suffering and all of that I decided I would just board my lapep and go home there is nobody who will come and pick you when I had walked out of the gate somebody called me from Abuja he said sir where are you I said, I'm in so so place. He said, No, 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 no. Why how are you going? I said, I'm going with Napep. He said, No, 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 don't go. That there's a pickup that has been arranged for you. He said, just walk inside. So so offside is looking for you. When I went, the person came and met me. He says, Are you Apostle Jonathan Lagan? In my, my my the devil told me, You apostle. And you are trekking. I said, Yes, I am. He said, Please come, sir. We have assignment. We have been charged concerning you. He took me to a helix. I saw soldiers everywhere. They opened the back seat. Empty. They put me inside. When we were driving all the way, I didn't, I didn't know what we were passing. I was just thinking. I said, now nah, maybe this. <laughs> when we got to my former house, my caretaker, <laughs> you know, when, when they don't see you finish, that's how we say in Nigeria. When they don't see you finish, He came out when he, I called him that I'm close home. When he came out, he saw he looks, he saw soldiers everywhere carrying my bags and everything. He ran and collected the bag and entered. I said, Very good, very good, very good. Be, be an obedient sooner or later. He'll turn in my faith sooner or later. Turn in my faith. you in the next two minutes to say lord the grace to stay on course to never be discouraged to never give up to never back down until my change comes the grace to stay on course to keep holding on to destiny to keep holding on to jesus christ come on lift your voice and pray Never 
In Jesus' name. Your future is not in the hands of a man. I don't believe in job security. For can a man receive anything except it is given to him by God? So the next time somebody is threatening you in the organization, out of politeness to his office, just smile. But no man has the right until God is done with you. And if it is the will of God that you leave, that's because there's a better option you have long been overdue for. It's not possible. My only is that I'm struggling with sickness. I have prayed. It's not working. I've fasted. It's not working. I've taken communion. I've pled the blood. I've gone for healing service. All the miracle service. Nothing is working. Then I need to remind you about Job. The most important part of his testimony is in chapter 42 verse 10. He say, And the Lord turned again the captivity of Job. It may be for a reason that you are going through that pain. It may be that there is a future ahead of you where there will be a generation that will receive the healing power of Jesus because of your pain. Can I tell you something about the healing anointing? By the grace of God in this place, we have seen God do marvelous things. Back to back testimonies about different healings. And I bless the Lord for what he has done. But do you know that there was a time I struggled with sickness? Do you know that there were times where I had to preach with the sickness in my body? They will know. Every time they'll keep looking at me just in case I will fall. But I had to go beyond my experience to exalt the word of God. He said that I know that even if this skin is destroyed, yet in my flesh, I will still see God. What do you think he meant when he said, by his stripes, you were healed? Sometimes the price for an anointing is the pain that the generation has faced. Sometimes. So the reason why you are so broke, you have to depend on people. Is because in the future you will have a global NGO. Now Bill Gates is the one sending aid to Nigeria, to Africa. Some of you, when God is done with you, in your eyes, don't re don't forget today. Don't forget today. Most times when you now enter the season of glory, you are quick to forget what you, where you came from. Don't forget today. In your eyes, you will see your own jets flying to other countries with food, relief materials, and with Bibles. And the beauty of it is, at that time, you will consider it a privilege to be of service to humanity. That means that the reason why you went through this perpetual lack, part of the reason, was to humble you. He told them in Deuteronomy chapter 8, that he allowed you to go through the wilderness, to suffer hunger, so that he would test your heart to humble you, so that you will know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. An end will come to that affliction. An end will come to that cycle of defeat. It's like things are going from bad to worse. I'm bringing you a good news today. 
where you are now is a preparation for the glory that is ahead lift your hands and bless the Lord because I know he holds my future my life is worth living just because he Please keep your hands lifted. I want to pray for you. First of all, let me pray for every one of you that is going through a season in your life. A season of affliction, of torment, crisis, troubles, whatever it is. And it is God's will that you go through it. Because it is the testing of your faith. I want to pray for you first of all. To those set of people. The same grace that was on Jesus that made him stay on course till he said it is finished on the cross. I pray that that grace will be multiplied upon you tonight. That you will stay on course to the very end. In the name of Jesus Christ. The grace to endure the shame. To endure the mockings. To despise the pain. To close your eyes and your ears from your mockers and your onlookers and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. May that grace be released upon your life today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you today. May you find the peace of Jesus Christ. The peace that passeth all understanding. The peace that is in the midst of the storm. The peace that is in the midst of the trouble. May you enjoy that peace unlimited. And joy unspeakable. In the name of Jesus Christ. And again let me pray for somebody who is due for a lifting. Somebody who says this nonsense must stop. Every cycle of torment around your life. Every cycle of reproach. By reason of your being in this service. I speak as one sent from God. Listen. The Bible says he that is sent by God speaks the word of God and God giveth him his spirit without measure. So when I'm speaking the word to your life, I'm speaking with an immeasurable release of the power of God. I declare that that cycle comes to an end forever. I declare that that cycle is over now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for his name's sake, I declare, be lifted from that place to a place of glory to a place of destiny to a place of abundance I shift your possibilities right now in the name of Jesus he said though weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning I prophesy over you that as you walk out of this place you are stepping to your, into your season of joy you are stepping into your season of joy joy everlasting joy unspeakable in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you any one of you that has been mocked any one of you that has been despised by those around you can I pray a very jealous prayer including your enemies that wish you to go down I pray that in the name of Jesus they will live but they will be alive to see you rise effortlessly effortlessly rising into glory rising into grace rising into wealth and prominence in the name of Jesus Christ oh yes no it's not all of them that will die some must remain alive otherwise what God is about to do for you they will be quick to say you use charm but let it be that they were alive they saw you suffer and all of a sudden without God consulting anyone that God lifted you out of shame he said for you have brought me out of a miry clay and set my feet on a rock I declare that that becomes your testimony that becomes your testimony now in the name of Jesus Christ I release the peace of God over your families every family facing any form of turmoil any kind of pain 
any kind of crisis that is not of God, this night will bring it to an end. And I release the peace of God over your families. I declare that it is well with you. Go forth and prosper. Go forth and wax greater. And may your life be a testimony. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Wave your hands for 10 seconds and give him praise. Hallelujah.